Well, Chai Yong joins me from North Carolina to talk about population trends in Brazil and elsewhere. He's an associate professor of sociology at the University of North Carolina, as well as a fellow at the Carolina Population Center. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Of course. I want to start with your reaction to this latest finding that Brazil's life expectancy has dropped by two whole years because of the pandemic. And the UN report shows this is happening in quite a few countries. Are you surprised? You know, yes, uh, I'm uh, not surprised. Sadly, I have to admit that, given the you know bad news coming out of you know all around the world, you know this COVID is truly have a detrimental effect on our 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 our, our, our life and have a major measurable effect on mortality. So, in many places, I mean, it takes decades to increase life expectancy by just a few months. How will these societies be able to bounce back from the effects of the coronavirus? No, I think that uh, this kind of uh, epidemic or war, you know, or natural disaster tend to have a very uh, direct effect, and usually uh, that would followed by a quick rebound. And assume this, you know, we will get the control, uh, get a, uh, the pandemic, pandemic under control very soon in hopefully this year <laughs> yeah okay so you're thinking a quick rebound there i mean so far we're talking about mortality right but then there's the other side which is birth and we're seeing a pause button on population growth in many places um and this was also happening professor even before the pandemic right so where's That's this baby right. drought most acute and what are some of the factors causing them now, I think this is a long-term trend, and, you know, if we, you know, just go back, you know, uh, about 50 years ago, everyone was worried about the population bomb, the world was, the population was exploding, and we made, you know, the human societies, you know, we all together made a concerted effort to control our fertility, and it was celebrated that, you know, we, the fertility was coming down, coming towards the so-called replacement level, that basically every woman having, on average, 2.1 issue kids, but the problem was that we did not stop there. Now, half, more than half of the world population living under this regime called below replacement uh, fertility, and that means in longer term population would decline, and we are going there. The pandemic, uh, unfortunately, accelerates and magnifies this you know, longer term trend. People are delaying their marriage, people have uh, competing you know, priorities, and uh, you know uh, the the COVID it just you know, magnifies everything in uh, yeah in great scale. So, Professor, what are some of the biggest implications on the planet if the overall population begins to decline? You know, I think we you know in terms of the world population, we still and uh, and uh, we have to acknowledge that half of the world is still living above a uh, 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 replacement level, and they are you know places. Uh, especially in less developed country, that the population is still growing rapidly. That's still a major concern. You know, overall, yes. You know, in longer term, the UN is projecting probably by the end of this uh, uh, century, population would uh, start to decline, and we will have to adjust our life and our economic model in a very different way mm -hmm. because entire capitalist model is based on the growth. The idea of growth is, you know, part of economic growth is population growth. 